Tori, thoughts on your last home game? I think the team finished strong in the second half. We definitely showed fight and effort. Um, I wish we had come out with a win so we could go into the Big Ten tournament strong, but I think finishing on that high, not high note, but finishing with all that fight is going to be good for us in the tournament, but we need to come out with that for the full game. Uh, Sierra, prior to every game, you know, the team needs to circle around you and you pump them up. It's like the ritual you guys do. And today you had six cancer survivors joining you. Talk, talk to me a little bit about that, that experience for you. Well, I thought it was great and how enthusiastic they were and excited to actually run out through the little huddle with us and then get in the huddle with us before the game. It's just it's just great that we're doing something for them today and we were playing for them and I kind of think we started really actually playing for them in the second half and I just can't thank them enough for coming out here and this this is all for them today. Sierra, you guys got it even. If you, do you feel like if you could have gotten over the hump and gotten a lead that that maybe you could have finished it out? Um, again, the first half kind of got us in a funk, and it's really hard with this team. We're not um, that experience of getting back in the game and being able to finish the game strong and us winning. We just kind of started doing that, and I think we're getting better at it. But I think the first half really was a detriment to us today. But I was just happy to see us finish off strong and show that we can play like that, and we can do it in the Big Ten tournament. It looked like you had some different combinations in the second half. Were you, were you looking at the, the ones that you thought gave you a, a spark or showed a spark at all in the first half? Well, you know, I thought the um, the first half we were struggling to find um, uh, the five that had the right chemistry. And on the second half, we, we you know put a unit out there that probably hasn't played together a lot this year, but. Um, and one of the reasons we struggled the first half was just because of our com our communication. You know, we just weren't weren't talking enough, in particular on the defensive end, um, and and that allowed them to get you know some open shots and and allowed Wisconsin to get in a rhythm. Um, and in the second half, we had a unit out there that, you know, their communication was at you know a much higher level, and um, that energy that we had on the defensive end um, provided a spark. And then I, and then I thought you know Tori and, and Sierra really. Um, kind of stepped up their game. Um, you know, Sierra was a lot more aggressive the second half in particular in transition. I thought Tori was a lot more aggressive on the offensive end and, you know, it, it seemed to work sometimes, you know, as a coach, you know, you just you put different lineups out there um, to see if it'll work and, and the lineup that we went with this, the majority of the second half just, you know, they, they were really clicking and that uh, helped us get back into the game. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Pink Zone and the atmosphere? There's a lot of energy today. Um, why is it such a special day? You know, I think it's a special thing because, you know, sports is, can be, and, and often is, you know, kind of a reflection of society. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those opportunities where, for the Pink Zone game, is when sports and community collide. Um, sports and, and competing in sports, you know, and collegiate sports and professional sports, you know, we're, we're often role models and, and, and people, um, get inspired by what we do on, on the on the field but you know pink zone is a day where we get inspired you know we get inspired by you know what we see the fight that we see from the survivors we get inspired by that and when you have all that energy in that arena you know it almost doesn't matter what happens with the game it's just you know a big old celebration for surviving and, and a celebration of fight and one of the one of the hallmarks of any sporting event is the triumph over adversity. You know that's why people file in to watch any sporting event. Is can they do it? Can that team do it? Can can that individual do it? Can they can can they make it happen? And when you bring breast cancer survivors and basketball together, the answer is yes, because all these hundreds of survivors have said yes. We can face adversity and we can win. And and it's it's just an incredible energy, and every year it just gets bigger and better, and it doesn't lose its its power, and it never loses its impact. Um, Coach, how big will a loss like a senior like Tori Walder be for the season next year? Well, you know the thing is, you know her lessons will be passed down, you know, so we'll lose her body, but we won't lose her spirit, we won't lose her leadership. Um, you know, because she's she she to me epitomizes epitomizes what college athletics is all about. I mean, this is a kid who, you know, has played on, you know, 
three Big Ten championship teams and NCAA Sweet 16s, um, but she's also the president of SOB, and she was on the homecoming court, and she's an honor roll Dean's List student, you know, and, and she's in the Athletic Directors Leadership Institute. Um, she, she has taken full advantage of what it means to be a college athlete. She's competed on the highest level. She's um, been a student of the highest caliber, and she's been a leader in this community. And so her lessons, her, the lessons of that and the example that she's provided will carry on throughout our team. And somebody else will pick up that baton and continue to be that example for Lady Line basketball. How important was it to get ahead in that first half? Well, the crowd can't play, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, they do a great job here of, of recognizing the breast cancer survivors and, you know, we see them around and, you know, I don't know, if, I bet everybody in the room has been touched somewhere by breast cancer or, or different kinds of cancer. So um, they have the turnout and the, the money they raise here is phenomenal. We're trying to get ours, you know, going in that direction because it's, it's obviously a worthy cause and, you know, I have relatives that had it and I, we, I pray nobody gets it and I don't get it. And, but there's, you never know what's lying dormant in the body. So um, one day we want to see it gone, and whatever we can do to uh, help that cause, we're going to do that. Was it important to get up early? It, it was. Anytime you play somebody at their home, I don't care what their record is, they play better here than probably mm -hmm. on the road. We might play a little bit better mm -hmm. at home. It's, it's comfortable. You're in your bed. Mm -hmm. You're eating, you're cooking, you know. Mom may have come to down and cooked you something. Um, so it's a, it's a lot more comfort. You're a lot more confident at home and you are on the road. So um, it was very important to be up and to come out strong because, you know, our team, we don't do very well trying to climb the mountain. You know, sometimes we lose the lead too. So we're learning how to win. They, they have a story program and have won a lot and we're learning at Wisconsin. But for us to pull this out, this big fire team.